All right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead, and go ahead and get started. Thank you guys all for joining us again for this training. Today we have a panel of speakers discussing all their programs that they have and how to possibly offer them to you that are attending. To start off, we have Tasha Pierce and Bonnie Mallow from the Department of Commerce. And then after them, we will have Jennifer Henderson with North Dakota Housing Finance Agency and Brent Ekstrom with Community Works. I'll hand it over to Tasha and Bonnie. And actually, Kylie, we're going to switch it up for you last minute because Bonnie's running a little bit late. So I'm going to actually start out and He's then on. turn it over. Is that okay with you? That's fine. Bonnie's on though. Oh, she yep. is? Yep. <laughs> oh, perfect. Then you guys go ahead and go. Okay. I'll start it out. Um, I'm Bonnie Mallow. I'm the Director of Division and Community Services. Uh, we have a lot of federal programs within our division and we're with the Department of Commerce. So um, the program I will speak to is the LIHE Low Income Energy Heating Assistance Program. And that is basically funded through the Department of Human Services. So they receive the allocation, they send the funding to us. We work with the eight agencies, well, seven to be specific, um, region one, which is Williston and eight um, is Dickinson has one director. And then the other regions are throughout the state. And the low income heating assistance program can help with um, fuel assistance. And then there is a um, also a heating um, program that does furnace repair. So in order to access those funds, you the um, people have to work with the social service agencies throughout the state. And then when you apply, you apply through them and ask them for the LIHEAP weatherization. Uh, we also have weatherization money that we can use for um, windows, repairing windows, um, doing some insulation, uh, weather stripping, that sort of thing. So those, those two programs are from the Department of Human Services. We also have the Department of Energy program that also does weatherization and there we can go a little deeper. We do um, blower door test is what they call it. I'm not the expert, um, Bruce Hagen, who is the program manager for the program. Um, we have the, each community action agency has a crew that will go out um, if you qualify for assistance and they can test um, if you're losing air quality within your home. They go out and do the testing for that. Uh, they do window replacement, um, some furnace replacements, and um, they'll do um, doors. So there's a number of things we can do with those programs. And um, again, you need to contact the, for the LIHEAP, you work with your social service agency and ask for an application for LIHEAP. And though that will help with your heating costs also. And then for weatherization, you work with the community action agency in your region. So that's just a real short, brief overview of um, those programs. And the contact is Bruce Hagen. He's out of uh, Devil's Lake. So I am going to turn it over to Tasha now to talk about the HOME program, which is also a program that is funded from um, Department of Housing and Urban Development and that we administer in our agency. Tasha. Thanks, Thanks Bonnie. Yes. So I'm Tasha Pierce, the HOME program manager for the North Dakota Department of Commerce HOME program, which is HUD funded. And I prepared some talking points for you today. Feel free to submit your questions in the chat and we'll address them at the end for a quick Q&A. The Department of Housing and Urban Development has designated the state of North Dakota as a participating jurisdiction to apply for and distribute home funds. 
The agency responsible for administration of the North Dakota Home Program is the Department of Commerce Division of Community Services. The North Dakota Home Program is federally funded and designed to create partnerships among government entities and the private sector in order to make affordable housing available to low-income households. DCS, its partners and stakeholders have a shared interest in creating more affordable housing for North Dakotans that is accessible, safe and sanitary in vibrant, thriving communities. The home program empowers members of our community made up of families, our children, veterans, local workers, seniors, households on fixed incomes, people without a home who may be experiencing homelessness, and even returning citizens who may have been previously incarcerated who are developing the skills to be successful renters and community members. Safe, healthy homes people can afford are excellent platforms for them to be successful in all areas of their lives. People who live within their means are able to become more involved in local groups, associations, and neighborhoods. The North Dakota Home Program has two primary activities, homeowner assistance and rental production and assistance. These are accomplished through four basic areas, homeowner rehabilitation activities and monthly rental assistance and security deposits are mainly administered by the community action agencies in each of the regions that we fund. Homeownership assistance is provided by the Grand Forks Community Land Trust, who is implementing a new down payment assistance program for the Department of Commerce's DCS program. Multifamily rental rehabilitation and production is generally funded by our community housing development organizations, our CHODOs, and our non and for profit uh, subrecipients or developers. Each of these housing needs is considered a higher medium priority need for the use of home funds. These needs are addressed and prioritized locally by set asides determined by DCS to their recipients and subrecipients. Each subrecipient de delivers the home program in their region, city, or multiple regions. Our community is stronger when every person can afford a safe and healthy home. Each year, the state collaborates with its partners and stakeholders to host public hearing forums and discuss the needs of each region in the state to determine if program goals outlined in DCS's annual action plan address the needs they identified. Program goals align with the five-year consolidated plan and may be updated based on the new developments that create ever-changing household needs around the state. The Home Program Distribution Statement, our PDS, describes how the state plans to distribute home funds and administer its programs. The plan demonstrates consistency with the goals identified in the state's annual action plan and our shared five-year consolidated plan. Federal requirements target assistance to families whose family income does not exceed 80% of the area median income in a given area. This is generally defined by HUD using their Section 8 rental program. Further income targeting and rent controls are required when assisting rental units. The limits can be found on the DCS home program website, and I believe Cheryl will be circulating those website links to you after the, or just prior to the session beginning. Um, home is a minimum allocation state from HUD. We generally receive about $3 million every year and we distribute those funds to each of our recipients using um, administration assistance, CHODO reserves, which is money set aside to fund our community development organizations, and then open funds that are open for all other for-profit, nonprofit developers to apply competitively for multifamily rental development or rehabilitation. We always encourage applicants to leverage the funds using the housing finance agencies low-income housing tax credit program, their housing incentive funds, local and uh, community match as well. As Bonnie mentioned before, we fund and provide set-asides for our community action agencies. They are nonprofits originally established under the Economic Opportunity Act. And there are seven of them that actually utilize the home funds or provide services in more than one region. Uh, they enable low-income people of all ages to secure the opportunities they need and to obtain and maintain economic security. Eligible activities that they generally fund 
can include rehabilitation required to bring an existing owner-occupied home up to the home property standards and the North Dakota State Building Codes. When rehabilitation is selected as a regional priority, neither the estimated value of the house prior to rehabilitation or the after rehab value of the house can exceed 90% of the median purchase price for that area. Each home, homeowner will be required to sign a housing rehab homeowner agreement and a land use covenant that restricts the affordability and the resale of the home for a particular period of time. All of this information is available to you on the Home DCS website and more information about each community action that Cheryl distributed to you is on the North Dakota Community Action website as well. Our CHOTOs and non and for profit beneficiaries are expected to locally meet the home program match requirement of 25% unless we waive it. Applicants are still encouraged to use those match sources we spoke about earlier. The approval of applications for CHOTOs and nonprofits for developers will be a competitive process subject to scoring ranking review using underwriting standards as well. If CHOTO reserve funds remain, DCS may at its discretion open a second competitive round of applications to be, expected, to be accepted for, from CHOTOs only. Eligible applicants include community-based nonprofits such as 501c3s. Uh, we certify them for HUD internally at DCS. And our non and for profits can participate in the home program as owners or developers of multifamily housing and be able to demonstrate technical expertise of staff and other project partners in housing production management. So particular for our audience today, the single family homeowner rehab program, if a particular agency is interested in becoming a new home nonprofit administering the program. The uh, annual plan and application for funds can be found on the DCS Home website. And additionally, any citizens who may be interested and want to see if they're eligible to uh, apply for those home funds, those federal funds, they can contact the local community action in their region and ask for a home homeowner rehab application. And they'll put you in contact with the appropriate person overseeing that program. Okay, we have a couple questions. Um, how much is available for down payment assistance? So down payment assistance is a set aside that we provide to the Grand Fork CLT, which is a new home subrecipient, not new to receiving our funds, but to administering the program on our behalf. We generally, well, I'm not going to say we, the CLT generally caps the minimum or maximum assistance based off of eligibility requirements. And then two, what they've determined to be the max amount they want to invest in the home. If it meets the uh, building codes and it doesn't require any additional rehabilitation. And that information is still yet to be distributed. I believe some of the program guidelines are still in draft format, but we're quickly trying to push them out and get them approved so that all of the um, citizens interested can apply for those funds. Um, how much does this, <clears throat> excuse me, how much does the state receive from HUD? Yeah, so we generally receive about $3 million. It's the minimum allocation. Even though North Dakota is a big state, we receive the smallest allocation of all states federally. And um, on occasion, we can receive a few extra thousand dollars, which we still distribute equally to each of our nonprofits and whatever is unobligated, we put in an open pot of funds for different developers to apply for for multifamily, um, uh, multifamily development or for additional homeowner rehab programs. Um. Is there any heating assistance for businesses? Hi, this is Bonnie. Not that I am aware of. Um, I know the Department of Commerce is going to be rolling out another um, 
section of funding for businesses, but I don't know if it's related to heating that's going to be coming within the next couple of weeks. So it's um, part of the COVID dollars that the state received and it will be used for uh, hospitality uh, businesses bars, restaurants, those sort of things. But as far as heating costs, no, there is, is not any funds available that I'm aware of. Okay. So if there were low income elderly couple living rurally, are there funds or ways for them to get money towards rehabbing their home, such as a roof or steps that would need replacing? Sure, yeah, they can contact the local community agency in their region. And if they're eligible, I believe they may pre-screen them by a phone, especially with COVID restrictions right now, and taking uh, particular safety precautions as directed by the North Dakota Department of Health, a rehab coordinator may go out to their home and see does it need any other rehabilitation to be brought up to the HUD standard and state of North Dakota building codes. All of those things would need to be included in that application for funds, not just the, um, the construction or rehab that the homeowner is asking for. And kind of a second part to that question. Um, and do I understand correctly that they need to come up with 25% of the funding? Sure, so DCS has typically waived the match requirement in the homeowner rehabilitation program because the majority of those beneficiaries do have fixed incomes or a very low income. We generally apply the 25% match to the multifamily rental development program. Okay. Um, just a couple comments that um, community options in Bismarck and Minot help with the uh, fly heap application and getting it submitted, just so people are aware. Um, I believe that is it for questions as of right. Oh, one more came through. What about urban areas and city limits? Still help with rehabbing homes? Yes, we do actually. So HUD puts out and distributes the um, area median incomes, income limits and rent restrictions, um, subsidy investment limits that we can, the maximum subsidy investment we can apply for every single county in the state of North Dakota. We try to uh, public, publicize those on our DCS home program website. So even entitlement cities such as uh, City of Grand Forks and Bismarck are included. And so the allowable subsidies and um, approval for funds can vary depending on population size and uh, low income population as well as determined by HUD. All right, I think that is all the questions for right now. Thank you so much, Bonnie and Tasha. And now we will turn it over to Jennifer Henderson from North Dakota Housing Finance Agency. Hi there, yep, thank you for having me here. My name is Jennifer Henderson and I'm the Director of Planning and Housing Development Division at North Dakota Housing Finance Agency. Um, we have a lot, a lot of programs that kind of have a uh, a wide gamut of what we can help with, including home ownership and some grant programs. So I'm going to just touch on a little bit of each of those and um, just ask questions in the chat like you did for Department of Commerce. Um, so I have a presentation that I was going to share, but it does not seem like I can find how to share my screen. So I'll just talk about our programs here. Um, one of our programs, so North Dakota Housing Finance Agency is kind of a different agency. We are not um, part of the cabinet agencies like Department of Commerce. Uh, we are under the Industrial Commission and we are also a self-funded state agency, meaning that our funds come from um, earnings on our from our home ownership program, as well as um, state and federal dollars that we administer on uh, for different programs. So our first program is the housing market survey grant program. 
And basically what that is, is communities need to identify their needs to support rehabbing existing projects or sometimes even adding new projects to the community. So we can offer assistance in paying for a market survey grant. Um, and that can cover up to 50% of a survey not to exceed $5,000. And that's for a single community. If a county would apply for a housing market uh, a study, we would likely go over that $5,000. Uh, just depends on how many communities are involved with it. And what an analysis will do is it'll help a community identify their needs for housing, uh, what existing projects might be there and some opportunities that they have, and also what is the population um, trending like in order to prepare for what that community will continue to need over the next uh, five to 10 years or so. Communities can also uh, do a needs assessment themselves without hiring a consultant. It's a little bit um, more work for a community because a group has to get together and perform those duties. But we have a lot of resources available um, if there is anybody who is interested in kind of assessing that need of their community. And once that need is kind of developed, we have um, programs that support many different areas. For example, we have a community land trust program. And that program will support um, a community land trust to be developed by providing them a line of credit to access. In order to access the community land trust program, the CLT needs to be established and have experience and be able to be um, financially stable to repay um, that line of credit. So at this time, community land trust that is functioning as the Grand Forks Community Land Trust. I know that Minot has a land trust that they are working on um, as well in gaining experience, but if there is a community out there that is looking to establish a land trust and wants to access this program, we will request that you hire a consultant or work with an existing land trust such as Grand Forks um, to receive some uh, consulting um, and figure out how to establish yourself with that. Um, we also have home ownership programs um, that provide reduced interest rate mortgages for first time home buyer loans, um, down payment and closing cost assistance so we can help with um, starting out that American dream and, and purchasing a first home. So for other development purposes, we have a construction loan guarantee program. And the construction loan guarantee program is to help support rehabbing existing projects, or um, it can also uh, support um, speculative new construction. And this is something that has to be used with a community of 35,000 and under. So it is for more rural communities. Um, and it it is definitely used in conjunction with other programs. Communities such as Hazen, Tioga, and Carrington have taken advantage of this program and developed a uh, subdivision with single family lots using the construction guarantee program. We have also rural loan programs. So our rural loan programs are programs that can be used for communities 35,000 and under. We have a rural development loan program and a rural rehab loan program. The rural development loan program provides low interest short-term loans and that is to be used for pre-development soft costs, land acquisition, site development, or anything with producing um, housing in a difficult to, to develop rural areas. The maximum loan is usually $200,000, not to exceed 75% of the project costs. And then we have a rural rehab loan, which is a long-term low interest loan to return a rural property to a decent, safe, and sanitary condition. This is likely one of the uh, most important programs for rural um, projects who need some rehab
So, am I back? Yes. <laughs> Looks better than fun. ever, Jennifer. That's fun that I have internet issues. Um, so I think I was talking about the rural rehab program. Is that right, Kylie, when I cut off? Yes. Okay. So the maximum loan amount is 100,000, not to exceed 75% uh, of the project costs. And that is something that we will go over if a project can warrant um, repayment. We have seen this type of program the Rural Rehab Loan Program be used in conjunction with uh, USDA Rural Development Projects. As an example, a project in Grafton needed to have exterior items completed, such as a new roof, windows, and siding. And so they utilized the Rural Rehab Loan Program to provide those upgrades to the project. And it has worked really well mostly because it is long-term financing. So most traditional banks will only finance for a short term and we, this is going to be more of a longer term commitment. So that is sometimes helpful for rural projects. Um, if you are an existing rural development, USDA rural development, you will need to um, have some negotiations with them um, in order to obtain any other additional financing, but definitely something to reach out to us for. And then we have federal programs such as the Low Income Housing Tax Credit and the National Housing Trust Fund. Um, as I mentioned, these are both federally um, financed programs. So we receive, just like for the home program, the small state minimum. So the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program is our largest um, source of funding for multifamily rehab and new construction. And it is often used with home and housing trust fund to have a project move forward. All units under the Low Income Housing Tax Credit pro Program must be dedicated to um, an average of 60% area median income. It can be used for new construction, acquisition, substantial rehab, or adaptive reuse of, of a building. This program can fund almost 65% of the total development costs, but it is very competitive. Um, we receive usually applications for requesting twice as much money as available. It also requires somebody who has experience in the program to utilize it. So if you have not heard of the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program, we will recommend that you partner with a consultant or a developer who has utilized the program and had successful projects. We have an annual application round and that it closes the last business day in September. And on an annual basis, we design what's called an allocation plan. That plan begins drafting in, the, in March. It is open for public comment. And so we appreciate everyone to comment on that, including um, rural communities. And um, we will make adjustments as necessary. Uh, we do prioritize vulnerable populations with our low income housing tax credit. And that includes homeless, um, senior housing or um, victims of domestic violence. Uh, so most of those vulnerable populations is what's going to be housed under our low income housing tax credit program. And then the housing trust fund, which we received $3 million, the small state minimum as well. 100% of those units have to be targeted to extremely low incomes or 30% area median income. It is used in conjunction with the low income housing tax credit. And again, our allocation plan is designed annually and the competitive application round, it ends in the last business day of September. And then finally, we have the housing incentive fund. So the housing incentive fund is our state legislatively authorized program to encourage developers to set aside some units for low and moderate income households. It has a wide variety of uses from new construction um, of multifamily rental, substantial rehab. It can also be used to retire market rate debt and add affordable units to communities or to have some adaptive reuse of an existing non-residential building. So there is a lot of uses for the housing incentive fund. To date, the housing incentive fund has funded over $97 million of dollars to 85 projects throughout North Dakota creating or rehabbing 2,215 units. At this moment, the Housing Incentive Fund has been fully expended and will require um, legislative action for any additional funding. 
HIF has been invaluable for our rural communities because it is more flexible than our federal programs and it is easier for a rural community to utilize. As an example, one recent project that we financed is a rehab of a senior housing project in Rugby, North Dakota. That has also Housing Incentive Fund partnered with Department of Commerce utilizing home funds on that project as well. Rural communities really do struggle though to utilize the low income housing tax credit and the housing trust fund program because they are very complex and require investment from national organizations and so a rural community does have a lot of challenges in getting that outside investment, which is why HIF is so invaluable. Um, the housing incentive fund allows a rural project which might not be able to access additional mortgage financing because the rents are already um, at the levels that the market will allow. So taking on additional debt is not likely an option uh, for projects that need rehab in those rural communities. So HIF is really important. Um, I do want to say that in November, our agency will be releasing a dedicated HIF website um, with resources and information available for you to help tell the story of the continued need for HIF. So watch for more information from our agency and um, Take a look at it when it's available to you. Finally, our agency has some grant programs, including our Helping Hand. Helping Hand provides grant dollars for nonprofit organizations, including the community action agencies, similarly to how the home program is distributed for single family rehab. It supports single family uh, rehab projects. So if a um, if a homeowner in a rural community or any other community um, needs a new roof or something of that nature, you would reach out to the community action agency and they determine the qualifications of utilizing home or helping hand dollars. Oftentimes helping hand dollars is used as a filler because home has limits on what can be used for expenditures. So uh, a lot of our funds are used for an example as a storm door um, because home dollars can't be used for that. So we can come in and complete a project. Also helping hand dollars can be used as the match uh, for home uh, projects. So it's a really good program that community action agencies um, pair together and um, help those um, low income homeowners uh, rehab their uh, properties and continue to age in place. Additionally, we have the Rehab Accessibility Program, which is a grant pro pro program that addresses accessibility in single or multifamily um, properties that are occupied by low-income individuals. This grant can cover up to 75% of a project not to exceed $4,000, and a household must meet income eligibility requirements. So this program is oftentimes partnered with USDA's um, rehab program that can help um, seniors maintain their home and add accessibility features such as a walk-in shower, a wheelchair ramp. Um, we've, we've seen um, changing out the bathroom accessibility and having a handicapped uh, toilet installed. Um, bathroom accessibility and ramps are our major projects that we've seen wrap being used for. Um, and a low-income senior household can qualify for um, that's living in a rural community up to 75,000 grant funds from USDA rural development. And then our funds can help fill the difference between what that can do and the project needs. So a really good program, um, both the Helping Hand program and the RAP program. If there are questions, uh, Nancy Rice, who is our program administrator is available and you can find more information on our website at ndhfa.org. I think what I included in our handouts today is access to our program summary, which lists all of the programs that the Housing Finance Agency has available and just a little snippet of each of them. But if you go onto our website under project financing or under uh, ready to rent, you will see the programs that are available for um, those citizens who qualify for different needs. And with that, are there any questions? There is one. Okay. What is the first time home buyer interest? The interest rate today. Hmm. That is a great question. I will look it up 
right now and see if we've got it posted. But if there's another question while I'm looking that up, Not yet, nope. <laughs> well, with that, I know Brent, here's view at current interest rates. Here we go. So our first time home buyer program looks like the conventional rate is 2.75%. Um, if you need to use down payment and closing cost assistance, we're at 3.25%. But obviously, um, our home ownership programs are run through participating lenders. So if you go onto our website at ndhfa.org, click on home buyer or homeowner, and you can click on a listing of the um, participating landlords and or participating lenders, and they will be able to see if you qualify for a first home program. All right. We have one more question up there. Um, I'm sorry to go back to home winterizing, but I got a call from Human Services wanting to know if I, as a housing authority, know of any place. Didn't you just say it's done through LIHEAP? So if you need some assistance for rehabbing a home that maybe it needs a new roof or new windows, a uh, storm door of that, then you would reach out to your local community action agency and inquire on the home program and the helping hand program. Okay, they just said they needed plastic on the windows. So contact the community action agency and see if they have anything available um, for that. It's possible that it might not qualify um, needing to plastic the windows. That's probably a donation from a local church or something of that nature um, instead, because it's pretty specific what it can be used for. Um, so sorry if that doesn't really quite answer it, but Community action agencies where I'd start, and if they say that this isn't a qualified eligible expense, then reaching out to local um, churches to see if there's any funds available through some of their emergency programs, that would be good. All right, well, last but not least, we have Brent Ekstrom with Community Works. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, I guess I get to bat cleanup, which um, is pretty fitting for what we do. I'm Brent Ekstrom. I'm the executive director with the Lucy Clark Development Group, which consists of three separate uh, corporations, um, all of which are nonprofits. Uh, we have the Lucy Clark uh, Regional Development Council, the Lucy Clark Certified Development Company, which both do our business lending um, and our business programs. And then we have Community Works North Dakota, which does our housing program. Uh, Community Works North Dakota is a 501c3. Um, and we are a statewide organization. And uh, what, we, the, what we really do and what we really focus on, um, we, are, we are a gap funding agency. So basically, um, when you're working with your bank and you're working with, with uh, Department of Commerce and um, the different organizations out there, if there are, are parts of the project or that uh, do not qualify for their programs, um, that's kind of where you can talk to uh, talk to us at at Community Works to see if we can if we can fill those gaps if we can finance that part of it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind where a lot of the programs that that Tasha and Jennifer talked about and Bonnie are a lot of those are some of those are grant programs. Um, our programs are loans, and so they say they are repayable loans, and we do uh, we do file security on them. Um, the the loan rates that we run are usually um, market rate or lower, and we set the payments in the terms based on, on affordability, um, not necessarily a, a straight formula. So we, we do both single family and multifamily housing uh, lending. So on the single family side, we have what's called the dream fund, which can do um, a lot of different things when it comes to, to home ownership. And that's really kind of where that's focused at. 
um, for down payment, closing cost assistance, um, rehabilitation, uh, emergency repairs, um, and construction financing, um, all that kind of stuff um, that you're going to do uh, either as a new homeowner or if you are an existing homeowner and you have some rehab stuff that needs to be done um, and that you're able to afford um, a little bit more debt, um, we can step in and do that. One of the things that um, that makes us a little bit unique over uh, over your lenders and over some of the other programs is, is we can go above the uh, the appraised value of a property. So um, if you moved in recently or you purchased a home and you've used a program where you've used 97% um, debt to in, or, um, debt ratio on it, so you don't have a lot of equity and something happens, um, it, we can step in there and we can go up to 110 or 150 percent of that appraised value and still do that loan. So you're not tied to that. You see that a lot in rural communities um, where housing values just aren't as high, and so we're not we're not restricted as much as your traditional lenders. Um, we do not compete with a traditional lender. So if you walk into the bank and say, I need a $10,000 loan to, to you know, redo my roof or to do something like that, and they say, okay, you can't come to us and say, well, we want you to do it at a lower rate. Um, the lenders are our partners. Usually they are the first, uh, the first mortgage holders, and then we come in with the second mortgage. And like I said, we fill that gap. Um, we do the same thing on the multifamily side. So um, you know, multifamily is considered it, with uh, the guidelines we go by is five or more units. So four or less units is considered single family, so it would fall under the other program. Uh, but multifamily program is our dream two fund. And we can do the same thing on multifamily. Um, we have a lot of flexibility there as far as being able to step in um, and finance projects. Um, again, we have very flexible rates and terms. Um, so we will look at the cash flow of the project. We will see, um, you know, what they can afford as, as a payment, and we will try to structure that loan um, a little bit more based on the, the payment that they can afford um, and less on the uh, uh, less on strict lending standards. Um, we do look at when we're looking at the uh, the Dream Fund. It is uh, it, we are a CDFI, which means that we have to do stuff for affordable. Um, Sixty percent of our portfolio has to be lent out to affordable or to uh, I'm sorry to average median income or below. So. Um, so when we look at multifamily, um, we're not going to do a lot of market rate, but we will do market rate in, in rural communities that just do not have the housing. If they can make a case that we need these apartments um, in the housing, in the area, um, there's nothing else available. We need to either have them rehabbed or we need to have some down payment assistance or whatever to keep these uh, units there. I and mean, we've seen that in a lot of some of the workforce development and stuff like that. So we can be very flexible as a nonprofit. Like I said, we don't have the limitations that a lot of the other of uh, the federal programs have, um, but we do have to uh, meet some of those guidelines. Uh, the last program that, I, that I'll talk about is just a special program that we put together. Um, it's called the Essential Public Employee Program. It's, it's the EP2 program for short. And that's basically a down payment assistance program for somebody that's looking to buy a house. Um, and when we define public employees, it's, it's school districts, it's medical, it's long-term care facilities, anybody that works for the state, the city, or the county, um, it doesn't have to be their first home. It could, I mean, it has to be their primary residence, but they could be upgrading to a different home. Uh, but what that is, it's a loan that uh, for down payment assistance that's uh, $10,000, uh, up to $10,000, and a 2% interest rate. So to help so you get somebody into the home, um, and uh, if they need some rehab or whatever, it could be used for that as well. So really what uh, the way that we fit in is um, most of the time what you're going to do is you're going to talk to, if, if you're um, working with the Commerce and and, uh, and Jennifer, you can talk to them. On our programs, a lot of time you're going to talk to the bank first. The bank will, and the bank will contact us on a lot of these programs. Um, some of the multifamily, you might want to contact us directly, but... Um, to get a real good overview of all the programs that we have, both on the uh, the uh, housing side and on the business side, um, you can go to our website, which is lcdgroup.org. So it's pretty easy to get there. Um, it has a listing of all of our programs um, and, and the rates and the terms and, and how we set our, our, our projects up. So with that, I'll open it to any questions. Can you repeat the website, Brent? Sure, I can put it in the chat room too. It's lcdgroup.org. Jennifer, I have a question for you. Can you um, 
explain a little bit more what a community land trust is for people who don't know what that is? Sure. A community land trust is a nonprofit organization that is working to develop affordable housing options for low to low income households. So what a community land trust will do is they will purchase a home or a plot of land to develop their land trust. They, instead of selling the entire home and the land to a buyer, they actually sell the home but retain a lease um, ownership in the land and lease it to the borrower. So what that does is when the homeowner decides that they want to upgrade to a new home, um, the community land trust you typically will retain first rate of refusal for um, the sale of that home so that they can keep the ownership in that home and sell it to another low income individual. Um, it also keeps the values of the home stable so that these homes remain at certain affordability levels for 99 years or whatever that lease um, is. Does that help or is there more clarification that somebody has for community land trust? Like I say, Grand Forks Community Land Trust is um, our kind of our major one working, I believe, Fargo or West Fargo has started one as well. Um, they've done that on their own. I'm not quite sure how far along they are in that process. City of Minot has been working on creating a community land trust and I know the Bismarck community has talked about it uh, for a number of years, but it hasn't come to fruition yet. One of the biggest challenges with starting a community land trust is the need for, I'm gonna say free land or free houses or cheaper houses to start out with. So a community land trust where it's been easier to start is because there's been some sort of a natural disaster such as the Grand Forks um, had their uh, flood and the housing authority had received some homes to which they sold to the land trust at a you know reasonable rate to get them started. In Minot, kind of the same story. There was availability of um, of flood homes or um, land that they could start the land trust on. Bismarck hasn't really seen um, that type of an opportunity. Um, other communities may look to their uh, past two uh, tax rolls to see if there's any properties that are owned um, through taxes and um, maybe start with those would be a suggestion. So community land trusts are great. They open up homeownership opportunities for low-income families, um, but they are uh, a, they take a little bit to get started. A lot of dedication from a community group. And then, what happens when the person sells that to move on to another home? Does that so, move back to the land trust? Yes. So it, the land trust gets. Uh, oftentimes, they have it in their lease agreement that the land trust will be the first one to purchase the home from the home buyer. Um, there is a calculation as far as sharing of equity, usually. So let's say a house appreciated in value for five years or ten years, however they owned it, a percentage of that equity is shareable with the community land trust, and the home buyer gets a portion of that equity too, so that they can move on. But the, then the community land trust owns the home again and puts it up for resale for another um, low, lower income household that would be eligible. So it just keeps that circulation of availability of, for low income households. Okay, thanks. Are there any other questions for any of our presenters? Any last tidbits, Brent, Jennifer, Tasha? I think the biggest thing is you can reach out to any of us um, with, you, with your questions and your projects, especially as you have detailed, because we've all worked together for years. And so we kind of know each other's programs. So if it doesn't fit with ours, you know, we can certainly direct you to some of the other ones that fit. So don't be afraid to to, to reach out to I think any of us uh, to get more information on the programs and maybe more specific on a, on a project as you move forward. 100% agree with that, Brent. And I also wanted to mention that if there are properties 
that are struggling right now with COVID um, situations and loss of revenues um, because renters are unable to pay. Um, number one, refer your tenants who are having trouble to emergency rent bridge. But two, it is possible that your project could qualify for a Bank of North Dakota um, program for COVID-19. So there is two programs that are available. There's information on BND's website. One is a loan program and one is an interest rate buy down program. So if, if the um, project is struggling, uh, take a look at those programs to see if there's something there could, that can help you stabilize um, during this time. Okay, that looks like it's it. Thank you guys so much for your presentations. And for those of you attending, we just want to remind you that next week um, we have High Plains Fair Housing talking about hoarding and uh, fair housing. And then we have domestic violence the following week. So, and the VAL Act. And please fill out your uh, surveys that are sent out to you. And we hope you have a good afternoon. Thank you guys.